Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. This is a Glutenberg, yes, not gluten, Glutenberg gluten-free alternative beer review. This is part two. We already did one. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. I'll put it up here. Also, don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate the sharing. Got my Grove Roots Brewing Company shirt on out of Winter Haven, Florida. And if you've ever heard of Legoland, it's down that neck of the woods near where my dad lives. So yeah, this is the brewery we go to when we go see him. Great brewery, really good beer, super nice people. Well, I hadn't planned on doing a part two, but if you've seen Glutenberg's beer, they actually have nine beers. And I was so impressed with two of the four I did in my first video, I had to know what the rest tastes like. Sadly, I can only get three. They make a double IPA and they also make a session IPA, which you know, pale ale, whatever you want to call it, which hints of pineapple and stuff like that sounded really amazing, but I haven't been able to find those two. In the previous video, you'll see we did a, what they call a white, which is their wit beer or take on a wit beer. Amazing. They had a blonde. It was okay, a little weird, but it was okay. The red was nice. Um, the pale ale, the pale ale kind of blew me away. I was shocked. The pale ale just tastes so good and I wasn't expecting it to stand out like that. So I had to know what the rest of them taste like. And I knew about the IPA and the stout. What I didn't know is they had a Gose, and then on top of that, they have a double IPA and that session IPA I just mentioned. So before we jump into this, because I'm looking to release this on a Monday, yes, you've seen this book before, but Lawrence out of Belgium won it, so I wasn't able to ship him one for anything reasonable. Everybody wants crazy shipping from the UK just to Belgium. I'm not sure why that little hop over the waterway takes so much effort, probably, or they just want to gouge a little, but yes, this is, I always call it electric IPA, but it's eclectic. So brewing eclectic IPA. It's my brain has a short circuit, I guess. But great little book. And yep, you know how it works. Somewhere near the end of the video, there'll be a keyword or a phrase, and all you have to do is put that down below. And bingo, a week after that, we'll pull somebody's name through the comments and it's your book. Unless you are outside the country or outside of the US, then I'll do what I can to either get you the book or a Kindle version. We'll try to hook you up in some way. First of all, we've got a nice stout and we'll go over each of these when I taste test them. Yeah, yeah. IPA, would love to try the double IPA. And a session too, that wouldn't be bad, it sounded amazing. I'm just not a big session person. <laughs> so we're going to go for the Gose. What, what is this? I mean, what is it? Well, it's only 3.5% ABV. So it's a very light, you know, it says right on the front, millet and buckwheat beer. From my understanding, it's brewed with, of course, water, buckwheat, millet, quinoa, lemon, lime, grapefruit, which I assume means zest, mandrina, Bavaria, hops, sea salt, and yeast, of course. So let's go ahead and check this thing out. I always think Gose's have that little bit of that ocean smell and it's, like I said, it's probably the salt, but I definitely smell a little citrus going on in there. And some lemons standing out quite a bit. Got the big giant glass. Good friend gave this to me. Kept my last name on it. If you're German, you can probably pronounce it better than I can. Have met somebody recently that could pronounce my name better than I can. Okay, very hazy, pretty typical of a Gose. Kind of a gold, goldish yellow straw color. I am smelling tons of citrus, but Specifically, the lemon and the lime. I smell the lime. They mentioned lemon and lime, but the lemon and lime both stand out together. I think the, the lemon hits you at first and then the lime kind of persists. Looks great. Got a nice head on it. And there is no barley. There is no wheat in here. Um, sadly, no rye, but hey, it's all good. I'm gonna pre-qualify this. I'm not normally a big sour fan. I've gotta be in the mood, you know what I mean? And some of them just make you pucker. And this one does initially, but I like it. And to be honest, it's probably one of the better Gose's I've ever had. I have not had a ton. Probably compared to most people, I probably have. <laughs> but my oldest drinks them all the time. That's like his thing. He likes sours and he loves Gose's. But it is really nice. I mean, I get the lemon and lime right up on the nose. It hits me, it's got a little pucker, I taste the salt. I don't know if I taste the grapefruit, I think I do, but I don't know if I do, but I get nothing but lots of like a, a little sour, a little tart, 
and a lot of citrus. And I mean, just like my mouth's full of citrus. And it's really good. I mean, really, really good. You know, if you're not into sours, you're probably not gonna like this. But honestly, this is probably one of the best sours I have. I love lemon, I love lime, I love grapefruit. You know, it's right up my alley. I do like some of the ones that have blackberry and stuff, but this is a great, great one. I would have no problem picking this up in a heartbeat, even as a four pack. So very, very impressed and cheers. And we'll go on to the next two. Okay, it's been about an hour since I've had that gose. And I gotta tell you, it just was really, really good. I was very impressed. Now, do I do the stout or do I do the IPA? I do the stout next. Why? It's a lower ABV. It's 5% instead of, I believe, 6 And on top of that, it is a much, much lower IBU. So the stout, hmm, let's think. 5% ABV, 40 IBU. When it's a little thinner, got a nice, nice head on it. Look at that foam. Solid stout. Okay, their description was cocoa bean. Cacao, cocoa, it's the same thing. Uh, they're interchangeable. I researched and researched it. Cocoa is usually meaning that it's already been processed, powdered, maybe even added sugar and other things, and it's been roasted. Well, cacao or cacao nibs are usually not, but cacao nibs, cacao, cocoa nibs are interchangeable from my understanding and from what I've read already. But I smell coffee. I know they're saying you're gonna smell toasted cereal and cocoa beans, but I smell lots of coffee and I smell that dark chocolate in the background. Kind of like a dark chocolate coffee. Okay, I get a smooth dark chocolate. I definitely get a nice subtle hint of coffee and it kind of lingers. Their flavor descriptions were espresso, dark coffee and ripe dark fruit. And I can see the ripe dark fruit. Definitely can see, you know, hints of something in there, maybe a cherry or something else as far as uh, the ripe fruit, but. If you like dark chocolate with a nice subtle hint of coffee, this is like right up your alley. This is really good. And I, if you told me it was an espresso coffee stout or a stout or whatever you want to call it and didn't tell me that it was gluten-free, I would never know. I guarantee you, if I gave this to you, you would never know. Ingredients were water, millet, corn, candy syrup. They don't specify what darkness of candy syrup. Coffee, cocoa nibs, and hops and yeast. Now understand, cocoa nibs and cacao nibs are interchangeable. We did a thing on the wit beer and it said cilantro. And then they mentioned smelling and tasting coriander. From my understanding, coriander and cilantro are very different, but they come from the same plant. So there could, somebody hinted that there could be a French to English translation problem there. And when they say cilantro, they might mean coriander. So cocoa nibs, cacao nibs, that one is already interchangeable, I'm finding out. But yeah, I'm gonna make dinner and enjoy this. This is a really nice stout. I'm not a huge fan of coffee in my stouts, unless it's super smooth. This is extremely smooth. And the dark chocolate stands out, which I know a lot of people like a more of a milk chocolate. I prefer dark chocolate. And to me, this definitely, I can, I can taste the dark chocolate and I can smell it. So cheers and we'll do the next one soon. Just had a little technical difficulty. So I'm repeating this, but the key word, yep, for brewing eclectic, not electric, eclectic IPA, we're gonna go with Glutenberg, very simple, easy. Just put Glutenberg anywhere in the comments down below. A week from then, we'll pull it. You can see I've already drank about half of this and that's because I had sound difficulties. I do apologize. We're doing the Glutenberg IPA, sitting at 6%, IBUs of 76. They say it's golden. I'm gonna give them, it's very golden. Looks like gold to me. They mentioned the aroma should be lemon with floral notes. I smell the lemon, I smell the floral, but I smelled peach initially and I still smell hints of peach and more apricot now that I've tasted it. But the flavors are supposed to be apricot. I don't know if it's the lemon smell, but I taste the apricot, I taste peach, and I smell lemon, which means I feel like I'm tasting lemon. It's made with water, of course, buckwheat, millet, black rice, corn, 
melodic corn maltodextrin, if I can say that word, hops and yeast. And I kind of wondered if it's not the maltodextrin that is giving it that, it's got a little mouthfeel, um, kind of like some of the heavier IPAs, but this is only sitting at 6%. And I'm gonna say it's gonna hold its own with any IPA out there. And I say any, as in any decent IPA, I'm not caught tall. I'm not talking Pliny the Elder. I'm not talking anything like, oh my gosh, but really good, respectable IPA. Very, very impressed. I like two out of four for the first video. I like all three of these. The Gose probably being my favorite. The Stout, I'm not a big Stout fan. I like Stouts, but I kind of got to be craving it. But that was an amazing Stout. Like nice, nice dark chocolate with hints of coffee. And the IPA is just just as good as the other two. I mean, just a great, respectable IPA. Credit to Glutenberg out of Quebec, Canada. Some great beer with alternative grains. If you're gonna to try to brew alternative grains, try doing the regular grains first and then get into that because there's a little more complexity, a little more uh, effort and challenge, should we say. So huge kudos to Glutenberg. Thanks again for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing. Don't forget to like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate the support. If you got any friends that got gluten issues, I mean, these are some great beers. Wish I had the double IPA in the session. If I get a chance to get them, I'll let you know. But yeah, great beers. Thank you again. Cheers.